All right, very good evening to you all and welcome to No Sweat. My name is Temba Madima and we are live. I hope you guys are excited. Sorry about that echo. Uh, we're in uh, at the presence of very esteemed, powerful athletes uh, this evening. I'm excited. I'm super excited. Let me, let me do an introduction. Let me do an introduction, proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting uh, closest to me, to my left, we've got a phenomenal Olympian, SA champion, 100 and 200 meter African champion, African junior champion. Hey man, it's so many things. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you Alyssa Conley. <laughs> Tim, I'm just the co-host, but thank you for that beautiful <laughs> yeah. introduction. <laughs> People yeah. forget I'm not the athletes right now. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just the co-host, but thank you guys. It's so good to be with you. It's going to be a killer tonight. We got flames, we got fire, we're going to bring it. Please share your questions and it's going to be hot. Who are you with us tonight, Timba? Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you another sensational sprinter. She is the SA record holder, African champion. SA indoor record holder, the fastest woman ever in South Africa, the only woman to go under 11 seconds, Karina Warren. <laughs> That's a one. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like oh a false start. <laughs> Karina, how are you doing? Good, thanks and you. Awesome. Such a, an honor to have you. Uh, join us uh, this evening, joining uh, Alyssa Conley and myself, um, Alyssa, my co-host today. Uh, you're, the, you're the guest, the guest of honor, the esteemed guest, and we, we're really, really excited. Thanks for having us in your, in your, your, your place as well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so tell us, um, how has life been? Let's just start there before we get into the whole program and all that. How has life been treating you? Well, it's getting better now, getting back into routines now, so it's, it's getting up on the hill. All right, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Conley, you've I mean, been good? I've been good, Tim, but I'm excited. I'm excited to unpack the life of Karina Horn. Um, you know, I, I refer to her, this is my, guys, this is my name. No one else can refer to her as this. And I've always said to her, when the time is right, I'm yeah. going to expose it. Yeah. But this is my chummy, my bra, horny in the building. <laughs> and we're going to be speaking about everything, you know, track and field, life, career, you know, woman in sport. We're going to unlock her... Um, you know, her life in Europe, how her training was there, what is she going to be up to back in South Africa, how things are going to go. It's going to be, it's going to be lit, right, Tema? It is going to be a lituation, uh -huh. um, a, a type of situation that is lit, mm -hmm. lituation. Um, and obviously, this is powered by back track sports and uh, we're going to have a good time. So I'm going to, should I run you guys through the program uh, before we, we get going or is there anything that you guys want to add uh, before we start? Let's Thanks for the coffee. Start. Yeah, thanks for the coffee, by the way. How does how is it? Can Karina <laughs> won't make a cup of coffee? I was scared. I was scared to say yes because I didn't want to be like. It's good. It's strong. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's gonna keep me awake. It's gonna keep us going, uh, and uh, definitely a good uh, cup of coffee. All right. So this is the program for today. Uh, just to get us started, it's gonna be a simple program, not too hectic. We're gonna start off by. Uh, dealing with the topic today's topic this is episode number 12 by the way uh, it is uh, grab the bull <laughs> by the horn <laughs> beep, 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 beep. excuse the pun don't excuse it it's up to you whatever you want to do with that pun um, but i think it's this phrase for me i think it, it says so much about uh, the type of person karina is she grabs it by the she grabs the bull by the horn not afraid to back out you know always fights for whatever she believes in so that's for you thanks <laughs> and uh, so the first topic, obviously, I need to introduce my guest. I've done that. Uh, we've got Alyssa Conley with us. And then the first topic we're going to get uh, started with is get to know Karina. Plain and simple. Who is Karina Warren? Um, uh, yeah, I can't say the other stuff. You know, you know my phrase. Um, where did your journey start? Who is Karina? Tell us. Well, I guess it all started in school already. Um, but it wasn't athletics since the beginning. It was more hockey. I was a provincial hockey player for mm. all my life. And then I think in matric, I got hurt um, because they like, put three or four players on me and they hit me and not the ball. And yeah, then my mom just got angry with me one night and said, I have to decide now what I have to do. So yeah, and then I decided on athletics and that's where I, st I stuck with. And yeah, that's where I'm still today. Hold up. <laughs> what? what do you mean? 
mean they put three players on you and hit you and not the ball? <laughs> Karina Horn was already making trouble in high school. <laughs> what is happening there? Tell us. <laughs> because, like, I'm, like, the fastest player in, in the team. So when I have the ball, I go score. I think there was one game in high school, I scored 23 goals. Jeez. And, yeah, it was a really ridiculous score. It's not a, even a hockey score. So it was actually, like, it was an easy sc- school as well. Um... And then they decided to put three or four players around me, so I don't get the ball. <laughs> and uh, it was at the uh, Nationals, actually. I played for Gauteng, and they also did the same thing. And when I had the ball, I was one-on-one. It was only me and the keeper. And then the sweeper came from the side, didn't hit the ball, hit my knee, and then my eye. And I got stitches next to the field. Um, just said, okay, I'll play with a closed eye with stitches. I'll go to hospital later. So that happened quite a few times. Jeez. So Karina wasn't only, or not is only a force to reckon with on the track, but she'd be having records on the hockey field as well. 23 goals in one game. That's My amazing. Guy. That's like a Guinness World Book of Record type of vibe. That. Yeah, but it was really easy school. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is an easy school? I mean, 23 goals. That's uh, amazing. We claim it. Yeah. Uh, well done and big ups on that. You know, um, yeah, I've never scored 23 goals. I thought, it was, I, I, I thought it was rugby or I something, you know. It was like a first team against the under fourteen team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> no, but that's still, that's still, that's still, you know. But it just goes to show competitive. You grew up obviously with, uh, you know, we know your your, your brother. Uh, did did that play a role in your competitive edge? Because I don't know. I, I've got an older brother, younger brother, and immediately everything is a competition, you know, and it's it's personal, and you have to fight for. Uh, territory and everything. Uh, was that the case for you as well? Definitely, yes. Since since we were little, we played rugby, cricket. We didn't do our homework until my mom gets home. So and then we just played, and it's all about the scores. Um, and we stop whoever's winning first. Then you stop the game so you can win. <laughs> <laughs> that is hard. Let's go in. Yes, I'm the winner. Good night. Yeah. Game's done. It's first, it's up, over. first one to this line wins, eh? Uh, no, me and my sister win. We were the complete opposite. We'd go on and on. Like, okay, you scored. No, no, I'm coming back. I'm yeah. coming back. Okay, now you scored. No, I have to score. <laughs> so we go, like, what's supposed to be a 30 minute game will be like a three hour, four hour game. Winner takes so, all. Yeah. We should have learned from you. <laughs> so scored and got him out of there. <laughs> winner takes all. All right, one more, one more. We, we did the same thing. You play until the morning. It's like two in the morning. You go to school the next day. We're like, all right, bro, last game. It's like, oh, why do you want to leave now? <laughs> you know, but just because you won. And that's how, that's how it was uh, with the boys. So good. Your brother, big ups to him uh, for, for keeping you on the edge. And uh, speed. Obviously, you said in the beginning you knew uh, you were playing hockey. Yes. And the transition to athletics, how does that happen? Is it, is it do you just wake up one day and it's like uh, a coach? Is it somebody who came to you? Or you're just running and you, you decided... No, I've decided to actually play provincial cricket as well, um, first team tennis as well, um, but it was, uh, tennis wasn't that good, but uh, it was more because of a, a sport, um, like a group, and athletics is alone, so I knew whatever I will put in, I will get out, and I can't blame it on anybody else, instead of 11 other players on the, t- on the field, we lose or whatever, or, okay, I put in extra work, it's still a team. Uh, whereas athletics, it's individual, and whatever I put in, I will get out. So it's only on me, and that's what I like. I mean, like like you say, athletics is individual, but we all know that um, you know you need to have that support system. Yeah. You need to have that team around you to help you get to your goals, to help you become that Olympic athlete, to help you break sub eleven, which we know you have done. Um, you know, and tell us, tell us about the importance of that team, and tell us how your support structure helped you, and who is in your support support structure. You know, in terms of your family and your friends and all of that. Yeah, definitely, uh, it's definitely my family, and then my uh, Rainer, my coach from Austria, he has been there for like it's, it's eight or nine years now. Mm. And yeah, he took me from average to this level where I am. And yeah, it's basically, yeah, it's a whole team I have in Austria as well, not only in South Africa, most of them is there, and messieurs, everything. So yeah, it's it's as well a team, and it's just the effort that you put in on the track, whatever is given to you, how you, how you take it. Yeah, 100%. And when did you move? When did you make that move? to go to Austria and was it hard because I mean we females you know we always think about uh you know who are we going to be with that side are we going to be protected is it safe do, or did you just pack up and be like guys I'm out I want to be an Olympian I'm going to Austria <laughs> yeah so actually it was in 2012 um during the European season 
I was searching a coach, um, so I was training with this, then there, then this, and then this um, Austrian people came to approach me at a meeting. So I said, now nah, I had a um, approach from America, two from Missis uh, Mississippi, I think, and I can't even remember, and one from Spain. And then I decided, okay, now I'm maybe going to Spain. And then this Austrian people was like, no, we will see you tomorrow. I was like, okay, fine, if you want to drive, you can drive. Free food. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, and then when I actually spoke to Reina and I saw what he had already a file about me and my running, how he has been watching me since I've been running in Europe. And, yeah, then I met him the next day on a track before I left back to South Africa after three months. And, yeah, after I met him, I called my mom directly, like, a few hours later, it's like, okay, I'm going to Austria. So then I just decided, okay, I'm going. Jeez. And, and do you believe that that's like the best decision that you made for your career and everything that you've achieved? Because after that, we just saw uh, Karina, 60 meter record, Karina, 100 meter record. You know, you were showing these international guys flames. We saw you on all the diamond leagues. You were always in the top five. You were doing great things. So do you think that's the best decision you... Yeah, it was definitely the best decision. And you didn't know it was going to be the, the, the best decision. It was a hard decision, probably the, the hardest I ever had to make. It was something... You had to decide that you didn't know. Yeah. You, and that was exactly the coach also told me. It's a, it's a risk, but mm. we have to take. You can't tell me, listen, you will be faster. And I can't tell, okay, I'm going there and I will be an Olympian or I will run sub 11. It, it was a risk. So it was definitely hard, but it was definitely the best. Mm. That's so great. The best. And I mean, you ended up being the best uh, first and only woman in South Africa to go under 11 seconds. And, you know, when I, when I look at the whole situation in the world at the moment, uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Uh, let, me not, let me not touch on that yet. But, I mean, t tell us about that feeling, being the first South African to run under 11 seconds. And, I mean, tell us about that race. It was a unique race as well. How you felt? Did you know it was coming? Just run us through uh, some of that as well. Wait, wait, being the only South African. Only to run under 11 seconds. Time to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was actually at the Diamond League, so it was probably one of the best races you could, could yeah. have been doing it. Um, I knew it was. I was in shape. Um, being at nationals in shape already. I think three weeks before. Mm. Um, I knew something was going to come. Um, in the warm up that night in Doha, it was in Doha. Um, I didn't feel too well. I was like, I can't run bit stumbling it was very hot um so where normally I, my womb is like two hours i was like no okay i have to change this so yeah and in the in the warm-up area that just as as soon as i walked onto the track they had problems with my my nike swoosh wasn't showing so i had to like i couldn't focus on my start where everybody was already focused i'd like i had to switch my number and <laughs> yeah so everything was just going like this. Car. yes and yeah then it was a i, I felt was a good start when normally I only have to work on the later stage of the race. I could feel in the start already, uh, Blessings was on the left of me. Um, I was in lane eight and so I was actually alone, but I could feel okay, I'm, I'm with them. And uh, yeah, then I just kept through and I think I ended fifth in that race. But yeah, when the times were popping up, I think the first one was 10 7 something. I was like, okay, now I have to. a good race. Yeah. Yeah, and then when my <laughs> name popped up, it was 10 98. And I was like, yeah. And there was a lot of South Africans actually at the end of the race. Wow. And they shouted. So it was, yeah, it was a good feeling. It's an amazing feeling, right? But after that, like, I know, you know, Temba, I need to tell you something about Karina. Karina <laughs> has, does weird things, bro. Like, I don't understand this, Jake. <laughs> And I know before race, uh, she eats a whole pizza. You know, there was once, I think it was in Durban at the Africa Championships, and I'm walking past Karina in the hotel, and she's about, she's getting ready to go run, yeah, to go yeah. to the stadium to run the 100 meter final. And this chick is sitting there with a full pizza. <laughs> and I'm like, are you not running the 100 meter final in like the next four? Because, you know, she warms up for two hours. Like in the next six hours, you're not running. She's like, yeah, this is my pre, pre meal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pre race meal. So, like, how number one and how do you keep that abs and then also what is your celebration meal yo whatever it is depends where we are yeah whatever i can get mm. um but normally it's junk food so first go to the towel eat what the buffet is <laughs> just before you go shower go out and get another meal the buffet is a starter right yes. <laughs> my goodness buffet is a starter the yes. buffet is a starter then but tell us about this pizza yeah it's good like uh, what happened actually is it was actually in the indoor season 
and I was stay it was in Linz in Austria where I stayed. So my first or my second indoor meeting was there mm -hmm. and that was the closest restaurant and they only had pizza that night. I was like, oh well, okay, then it's pizza. And that the day afterwards I, I ran the, the qualification, it was twenty fourteen. I ran the qualification for the indoor world champs. Mm. And yeah, I ran a world class time. It was I think seven two something. That, yeah, that yeah, yeah. And then I was like, what? And then from that day, I've always had pizza because I was like, oh, that, that, that pizza was good luck. That's, <laughs> that's, that's your that's perfect meal. Yeah, yeah. I need some pizza. pizza. Hey, I'm gonna try that. Hi. I'm gonna try that. Hey, with the eight hundred, you don't try for anything. <laughs> it will come out. Yeah, no, definitely. It will. Definitely. I mean, eight hundred. We don't play. We don't play that game. <laughs> you know, we like it short and fast. Um, well, we try it's to be fast, but short. 800 is a little too far fast. Tell us about traveling. Europe, you know, like everybody thinks Europe is going to be this uh, glamorous, easy going. Yo, but I remember that one year where you just had the worst traveling experience, race after race. Uh, just didn't go according to plan. Just run us through that season. Yeah, that was, that's that travel. People think, oh, you're flying here. <laughs> three countries in like three hours. And they just think it's all glamour. Go on the plane, act like you like there and actually it's not um it was um i can't remember what year it was i think it was 2017 or something as well even with the olympics when we flew back um our plane was was about to fall yeah like there was already a, a, a article out that the plane fell so it was a 40 45 minutes flight and it was three hours so when i called my mom she just burst into tears because they were a flight just bef before us and yeah so the flight is, is so you're sitting uh, you're sure. sitting in your seat on the airplane, right? Yeah. And what does the pilot say, or what does the the head host say? What happens? In 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 this case, like mm. normally in turbulence, when it's bad, you will say, okay, we we are going through bad turbulence or whatever. But at this particular flight, you didn't say anything. The Just pilot, kept quiet. The pilot didn't say a word until we landed, <laughs> and it was like yeah, it was three hours. I think it was yeah, there was I think eight um, South Africans on the, on the flight from from the Olympics. And yeah, it was three, three, three and a half hours. And I like literally, I sat at the window Yo. and like you were between the mountains Yo. and then the plane, it was like flipped. Yo. So they also said um, it was like a, a, a storm, like I can't remember. And they said normally the pilots give up. So it was specifically that pilot we also had that just didn't give up. My goodness. Um, and it's like, then you see, you're going to crash into the mountain now and you're just like this. Yo. And place. what's going through people your mind at that Yo. time? I think there was, there was um, someone like people had attacks on, on the panic attacks, like mm. people were lying and shaking, Yo. people were crying, people were shouting. It was the worst part of my life. Yo. Wow. This is the first I hear of this. Yeah. This you, is the first I hear of this. I mean, it's what, five years later? Yeah. No, oh that my was, gosh. That was bad, really bad. Wow. And then the worst is we once we got out it's like something to do with the heat or something that you can't get up so the it's pushing the plane down mm, so then, yeah hey. it's going down into the mountains so eventually after three hours we well let's say two and a half hours we got out we had to land at the first um, airport we could and then it was another 45 minutes ah. to fly we landed there we took got out and they said go back in go back in no 30 ways. minutes later to fly back to <laughs> and then everybody jump back in yeah you we had no choice. Yo, at that point, I'm like, it's fine. I'll try tomorrow. I'll jog, guys. I'll yeah, try tomorrow. So like, I'll find you guys there. I'm going to have a nap <laughs> here at this airport, and I'm going to just gravitate myself, get, bring myself towards myself, and I'll fly tomorrow. No, that's there's no way. No, mm -mm. we were like that. But yeah. then eventually the people were, they like forced, Forcing, us, forced yeah. us on the plane. Yeah. And yeah, it happened with other races in Europe as well. We are even missed a race. Um, couldn't go. It was a turn. It was something like a, something like a yeah, Turin or something like that. And but came through the airport. Tornado. Tornado. Yeah. 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 In, in Vienna, in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> Tur. <laughs> That tomato, thing. Yeah, that thing. the red tomato, <laughs> tomato. came <laughs> flying in. <laughs> so that thing. <laughs> now you guys got me thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was went through the airport, so all the flights got cancelled. Mm. And I was sitting, waiting, 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 and then everybody in, like lost. Tornado. Tornado. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you said it like ten times. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, mind is like it's still. Stop catching up. 
up. Yeah. I'm still on the on the Buffering. fact that the flight was three hours from a 45 minute, and you guys nearly crashed, and this was five years ago, and we never heard about it. Yeah. I'm still stuck on that idea. Yeah, I should have hit the news. Eh? Yeah. No, no, it was really bad. Really, really bad. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. So that that the flight, and then we still had to fly back from Rio. Hmm. Um, Sao Paulo was the was the flight back to South Africa. Ten hour flight. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, it was bad. And other races as well. There was a race in 2019, I think, as well, to France, somewhere in France, I can't remember. Um, Sotteville. Um, also, flight got cancelled, 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 cancelled. So eventually, at like 12 at night, they said, everybody, get in, you have to stand in the line, queues, 3 a.m. I only got a hotel. Mm-hmm. Went back to fly the next morning, um, flew at 7. Got to the hotel, I think, at 12 or 1, and 3 o'clock I went to the track. Jeez. But this is a life. This is that life that people don't really realize when it comes to um, track and field athletes. I mean, athletes in general. I'm sure everybody has traveling issues and doesn't matter what sport you're doing. But everybody always thinks like, oh my gosh, she's you know, in Italy or she's in Spain or she's in Brazil and it's amazing. But people don't understand the amount or the time we spend traveling. Like mm. 18 hours yeah. on a train and whatever. Yeah. And then you still have to get to the... Um, First, you get to the hotel and there's no food because everything's packed up and yeah. you just have to eat or whatever or yeah. go sleep hungry and then the next day you have to race. Like, people don't understand yeah. the get challenges. To the track, get to the hotel at yeah. 1 o'clock in, in, in exactly. the morning. It's not always good. But I mean, like, all of this just shows your perseverance. Like, everything that you've been through, you've obviously just persevered and you've been through a lot of challenges, um, both physically and mentally. And I think that it's just amazing to see that every time you just come back and you're like, ah, it's fine. Whatever. Say whatever, do whatever. I'm going to show you what I'm capable of. And I think it's, it's you've hit the 360 again and you're about to, you're about to bring it back to the track. <laughs> bring the flames back. And, you know, we can't wait um, to see what you what you're going to bring to track, especially for female track and field in South Africa. We can't wait to see what's going to happen. But, um, you know, just take us through how you deal with challenges and how you persevere mentally, you know, your mental work and, you know, how you come out of it. I know I've seen a few videos on Instagram where, you know, you're very motivating and you tell us about your ball that you have and what you write on your ball and on your spikes. But just take us through those things that you do to help yourself get through these challenges. Yeah, there's a, f- there's a few things that I do. It's not always easy, like... Yeah, there's nice motivation talks and stuff, but it also takes a while to get there. Mm-hmm. And once I'm there, okay, then I can motivate because I know what it is like to go th- to go through something. So yeah, it's not always it's not every day easy, and that's I think that's where the dedication comes in, and that's what the motivation is not there always. So it's more about the dedication that you put into, and the you have to th- to remember why and your who, and mm-hmm. then you can only do your do. Mm-hmm. Um, if you figure out the who and what that's when you can still do. And while you go through through st- tough situations, um, I, even I lost it. Like I lost like, okay, who am I? What am I still gonna do? Um, is this what I want? Mm. And if you st- if you figured that out, that that is what, what I want, then it's easier to, to do it. Mm-hmm. Even though every day is not the same, even though it's a tough day, you can still go through it because you figured out uh, the who and the what. Yeah. And I think it's also important to note that, you know, you said your why, your who, and then you do. But it's uh, mm. it's also like some that's powerful, eh? Mm-hmm. Your, your why, your who, and, and then, then you do. do. <laughs> My guy, My drops goodness. mic. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's very powerful because um, you know a lot of people firstly don't ask themselves those questions, so it's really good to to ask yourself that question. But also, it's okay to realize that the answer can change. Yeah, for sure. You know for what sure. I mean? It can change. It can be different every year. And it can go back to what it was previously. And I think that that is a massive motivation for young female sprinters and female athletes, especially in the country. Like, you know, just to understand that your why can be something different this year and, and different the next year and different the next year. But it's okay. Just stay true to your purpose. And I think that is what we see in you. Um, you know, no matter what you're facing and challenges, you stay true to the purpose. And I know that that 1098... I know it wants to become a 1089 and then a 1079. Mm, 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 why? Why who do, brother? Mm, what do you say? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, you, need know, <laughs> you need to know your why. Uh, your who? Your who. And then you do. And then you do. Man, that's powerful. I think it's, it's so important because uh, the most important thing, I think, is always reminding yourself um, why you're doing this. You know what I mean? You can either do it for other people, you can do it for friends, family, whatever, or it's, it's personal and it's something that you... You're gonna see, you have to go to bed with every night. You have to wake up in the morning uh, with it. You know, you're going to have to pursue it either way. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's finding that, that purpose. Why am I doing this? Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm. 
uh, and that's the most important thing. All right, let's move on. Uh, we've gotten to know Karina that you almost died five years ago. <laughs> yes. uh, that you were a, a monster hockey player, a hockey essay. I'm um, sorry, guys. <laughs> you guys lost out. Mm-hmm. But uh, we won uh, the fastest uh, woman, in woman South sprinter ever. Yeah. You know what For I mean? Sure. And um, yeah, so, so that's phenomenal. So we, we, we say big up to athletics. Yeah, yeah. Just a few signs there for the people. My peoples are watching out there. So, Karina, um, I know you guys are more into the track, but there's also uh, road running. Wesley Baton, mm-hmm. he does a lot of uh, articles. He writes for us and so on. And he wrote about um, the future, mm-hmm. uh, the rise of uh, middle distance uh, running in South Africa. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because it's so important because you see a lot of, there's a lot of women that we're seeing uh, being developed on the, on the road, the track athletes. They get on the road. Uh, these uh, races, they can win uh, a lot of money, mm-hmm. uh, up to 300k if you win all the races mm-hmm. or whatever. That's 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 not something that. It's not easy. You guys are track stars. You know, it's it's it should be on the track as well, um, but it is not. Mm-hmm. What what do you think is the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, to to that side of you know making money out of uh, this uh, gift or talent? Uh, I know it's a touchy one. I'm asking. I must ask. Uh, it's a touchy topic. Uh, let's let's hear. Uh, Alyssa, you're gonna start. You look like you're already folding your arms, ready to fight <laughs> I'm me. I'm ready for action. Hey, you listen. These things, you know, listen. No, I think like you know, it's it's it's, it's obviously a marketing thing, you know, and, and we can understand from company point of views that um, distance is a mass sport, so you have a lot of people that enter distance races. You have a lot of people that take part in it. Whereas sprinting is. It's just a few people that's going to come and run. And not a lot of people turn up to the stadiums and watch it. So even if you charge an entry fee, there's no money being made. And sponsors don't see um, return on investment in South Africa when it comes to sprinting. Because mm. there's, there's not a lot of people watching it. There's not a lot of mm. interest. I mean, it might have it might have grown over the past few years with, you know, the likes of Casta Semenya, Karina Horn, Akani Simbini, Wade Van Nicker, yeah. Rashval Samai, Henrico Brink. Is, you know, these, these guys... Doing, doing fire things on the track. But I think that because distance, you have so many people entering and obviously they have to pay a, a entry fee of like, what, 200 yeah. bucks per person? So the remuneration, the income is massive when it comes to distance. So they can't afford to pay athletes 10K, 20K per, per race. I don't know. I don't know how we can bridge that gap when it comes to track and field within South Africa. I know that track athletes can make money abroad. Yeah. But yeah. locally, no. I'm not sure what we're going to do. If Maybe if Karina runs at 10.6, <laughs> something can happen. <laughs> Hey? Yo. Maybe. Yeah, but what I mean, do you, you think, Karina? Yeah, Karina, you hit us before I, I put in my male yeah, uh, yeah. perspective. No, yeah. I, I agree with Alyssa. Like locally, you you can't make a, an income, mm. and it's probably not good to say, but that's why I, al- I also made my seasons for me, and not like people say I don't run in South Africa because mm. it's not only for the money. It's because I want to be ready where I can make the money. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's, it's your living, it's, it's, you have to look after yourself. Nobody else is, go- is going to do that. So, yeah, to run locally and, yeah, you run well here. Mm. You go abroad where you actually have to perform, where you actually can get the money. Mm. That's where you actually have to perform. So mm. that's why, why I did my things that way for yeah, the past time. nine years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but it's so hard, though, because how you, like, obviously, you, Karina, you're on that level. You can get races internationally you know what i mean but what happens to these youngsters still coming through and still trying to put their times out to get um races internationally the youngsters that don't have agents you know there's so much uh people being exploited within track and field they get signed at like 16 17 but then they don't get taken care of or they lose that opportunity to actually make money so it's it's, it's such a ripe discussion and and topic in south africa I, i really don't know yeah no it's difficult i think yeah especially with us it is difficult the talent is there it's mm. just the the people around you and to get to that that level mm. it is difficult um i've also i've been there where i where i had to start but as well i mm. i know how it is to to go through things like yeah. that um but once you're there it's, it's okay but to get there so yeah south africa has to get people to invest mm. in that Mm. Um, they have to look at the talents and it's like, okay, we can invest in that person that looks like a good talent. Um, we can make our money back. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's they're not there yet. I think it comes down and boils down to us always saying that there's a massive gap in um, development. 
you know, from ages 16 to 25, let's say. Yeah. That is where the development happens. Because I always say South Africa does really well at World Juniors, does really well at World Youth, um, you know, Olympics, Youth Olympics and stuff. We do really well. We bring back medals, all of that things. But then we have that massive gap where once you leave high school, once you get into university, there's a complete shutdown. And then we stop producing a lot of major athletes that can win medals. I don't know. Timba, I, I think we're taking your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we can chat about this no, forever. It's, it's good like, because at end of the day, we need these answers. We need to hear this uh, perspective. And mm. yeah, it, this has to be solved, you know. Um, we don't want uh, the next future top athlete to um, go through the same thing, number one. Um, I mean, when we started our backtrack, our thing was, listen, there's a gap missing in, in athletics. We need to fill it, you know, so that the young guys that are coming through, they see athletics differently. And, you know, we still have a lot of work to do, but I mean, that's what we were, we were aiming to, to fill, you know, when we, when we were doing our thing. So now we can't have the next uh, future athletes going through the same struggles. You get well, what I'm saying? About, what about this? Is, is this a fear that you have? I, I mean, I know you have a name and you have a brand and you have a portfolio, you know, at IAAF and ASA and whatever. Um, but do you feel like at the age of 32, having to start from the bottom again like in terms of you know you obviously haven't been on the scene for what, two years now yeah for two years now so um do you have that fear because now we're thinking we're talking about young athletes that are 16 18 25 but yes Karina Horn fastest woman in South Africa 32 years old and she's gonna come back what are your fears <laughs> like what are you what are yeah, you what do you think about question yeah. yeah well there is obviously things that you think about mm. um but I don't think um fears maybe too strong for me yeah yeah um there's also not doubts there's let's say this there's, there's um things that you think about realistically yeah yeah um so there is things that i i do think about everything i'm not the person that just go into something and say only see the positive and yeah, yeah, yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm yeah. gonna come back and i can run 10 8 now next year i'm gonna come back and run 10 7 i know i look at everything no i haven't been on the track for two years so mm -hmm. okay it's gonna take time or and so before I, I go into something, I've looked at everything, like from the worst to the best. And that's how I first decide, okay, that I'm going to go for it. So for me personally, if I decide on something, um, there's no fear. Mm. Um, there's going to be hard times and stuff, but tough times, that's always there. But um, fear, I am... Not, not That's good. I, like that. I mean, I like that. There's no fear, and 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 I think that also you answered my question because you don't really care or worry about um, the marketing side, the remuneration side, the sponsorship side, mm -hmm. because like you never even alluded to that once. You're just like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna decide. I'm gonna do. I don't care who's backing me. I don't care who's on board. Yeah. I've made this decision. So then it, it goes back to um, you doing it purely out of passion, yeah. and because it's your why your who and your do. I mean, you know, you're not even thinking about it. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of us young, our, our young athletes, you know, they run one good race and they're like, sign me, yes. mm. like sign me, pay me now. I'm fast. Sure. I've made it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then you have, it's, it's hard work and it takes years. Look at, I mean, you have the fastest woman in South Africa, sub 11, and she doesn't even care who signs or which, what she runs in, but she's there to run. And I think that's a, a very important lesson for our youngsters to learn. Like, you guys, you first have to put in the work and you have to do it consistently over time and everything will come at the right time. Yeah, uh -huh. definitely. Yeah. You see? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the thing as well. Like, it didn't just appear overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you had a long I, journey, yeah? A, lo a lot of people think that. Like, <laughs> I get a lot of messages like, please give me this, please sponsor me for Yeah. You. Like, you are like maybe 18 or maybe you didn't even make a final in South Africa. Now you're texting me to pay a European trip for you. Um, it's like, I didn't even do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So some people just don't know what it really takes yeah. to get to the top. I think I think that's so important because, um, I mean, I've known you for years and I've seen the journey. It hasn't always, it's, it's been a difficult one in the beginning, you know, trying to figure out 200 meters, yeah. uh, figuring, out, figuring out programs and being in the scene for a long time. You know what I mean? and working and then you know the austria thing happens and all of a sudden things pick up you know people will think that's luck um how did this happen but i mean end of the day you have to put in the work and when it pays off everybody's they want to be surprised like what's happening you know mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's work that you have to put in and discipline over years i mean she mentioned that 32 years old thing actually and phrases how much 36 34 35 35 
four, five, 34, 35, 36. 36. It's <laughs> 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 still running fast, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm thinking of yeah, Cristiano yeah, Ronaldo. PB. Yeah, r- running a PB at 34. Yeah. And it just goes to show if you really um, take it seriously and you, 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 you immerse yourself in your passion and your mm. gift you know, and you enjoy it. I think that's another thing. Don't forget it. Like You've got to love it. Because there's more negatives and there's more downs than there are positives. That's a yeah. fact. 100%. But you mentioned something there. 200 meters. <laughs> Can we see Karina Horn <laughs> running at 200 meters anytime soon? No. Never. <laughs> Never. Come on, Karina. Like, Karina, you're disappointing the people out there. The people want to see Karina Horn run at 200 meters. That's yes, this. I know what you're going to say. Yes, this. Let's I know what you're going to say. Let's entice the people. <laughs> <laughs> let's entice the people okay, all right let's this is people. what's gonna happen classic shootout <laughs> battle of the sprint queens 200 meter specialist <laughs> versus the 100 meter specialist <laughs> that's karina's dog hulk and i don't <laughs> think he agrees it's not mine oh it's not, oh, it's not, it's not, it's not hulk i thought it was hulk just like backing his girl here because tim was about to put us up on a challenge <laughs> <laughs> stop it <laughs> So here's the challenge. I'm gonna make it fair. You, 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 you 100 meter, you 200 meter. You guys have battled before on the 100. We remember what happened. There's some good and some bads for you, Karina. Uh, you're not gonna go there. There's some 150. Really bad for me. Yeah, more bads for you. Yeah. <laughs> 150 meter shootout, Karina Warren versus Alyssa Conley. What do you guys say? Why do we meet in the middle and make it 180 meters? 150. <laughs> That's the middle. 180, no, 120. Ah, okay, 150. Yeah. Okay, wait, why don't we do this? If Alyssa makes a comeback, or when Alyssa makes a comeback, and when Karina makes a comeback, why don't we let the subscribers or the viewers and the viewers decide okay. whether we should battle each other in a shootout in 150? Maybe yeah. maybe we can put it out for 2023. What, uh, year, what year are we in now? 22, hey, we're 21. We're 21. Oh, okay, 2022. Or we just do it when we're both unfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you unfit right now? Never. No, on the street. Are you unfit right now? <laughs> yes. Okay. Nah. Okay then, guys, if we get a hundred comments, me and Karina battle each other in the 150. I'm very unfit. December. Last race I ran was in 2017. Last race she ran was in 2019. Yeah. So she still got two years on me. But oh, anyway, yeah. if you guys want us to battle in the 150, 100 comments, we'll do it. Yes. 100 comments. Come on, guys. Let's yes. go. Let's go. Let's go. 150 yeah. comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then it's definitely 150. Then it's definitely 150. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to uh, the next uh, topic. Uh, obviously, uh, the program is moving. We've got. Oh, well, it's still good for time. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. So the next uh, topic I want to talk about is. I think this one is. is uh, it, it's super important because it also. It also. Hey, stop it. Sorry, we're just talking to the dogs here. The pups are hungry, man. Yeah, shame. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, so the topic that we want to we uh, uh, touch on now is stay in your lane. Mm. Um, the fast lane, stay in your fast lane. Um, the pressure for female athletes. Is there pressure for female athletes in South Africa or is there no pressure at all? Should there be more pressure? Sure. I mean, for me, pressure is good. Like, you need to have pressure. Yeah. I think that the lack of female sprinters in South Africa is the problem you know because yeah when you the thing is I don't know if you feel the same but when I rocked up to a meeting right and I saw okay Karina's there okay um, Tamsin is there okay the is there and I looked around and I was like okay back in the day we had Melissa Hewitt and and um, we had more athletes like um, Cindy Stewart and, oh yeah you know you know back in the day we had way more athletes to yeah Mkenku uh, yeah uh, you know so in our era Isabel <laughs> in our era oh, yes, when Isabel. we raced that time you know oh, with the Geraldine Belays, we had a lot of athletes so when we would rock up at those events we were like yeah. crap okay we have to yeah. pull through you know to make a final was hard yeah. because we knew like there's about 20 great sprinters here and you, you have to work to make a final but these days when you rock up at an event you're like ah, i'll make the final it's fine yeah. like i know i'm gonna make yeah. the final i know i will have a race in the final and i think that is the major problem you probably you won't even have a semi yeah. yes and uh, th- 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 that's a big problem you you want to you want to chat to the boys uh, quickly that is Hulk. <laughs> See, that is Hulk. Hulk is like, don't mess with my mom. 
She don't run 150 <laughs> meters. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. All right, uh, Karina, uh, Karina's just ch- chatting to the dogs a bit, and then the, we're gonna get this one going. So, so you say the pressure is good? No, uh, pressure is good. Yes. But there is no pressure right now. Currently, there's no pressure, so no. that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Yeah, but like you said, like you get into women's, uh, whether it's uh, provincial championships or even uh, nationals, straight to final. Yeah. Straight to final. And that is why our, our female athletes, our, our women, are not prepared for the pressure at the international mm. circuit. Because they don't feel that here. They don't feel that. They know, okay, I'm either going to come top three or the top three. So just know that's all I want. That's going to happen and I'm going to get paid to be top three. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if, I, if I'm top three in a 12-5, if I'm top three in a 11-8, I'm still going to get paid Definitely. to be top three. So then when you get to Europe, you're like, whoa, what is yeah. happening here now? Because now you have whatever meeting you run, you know, there's always someone that can break the, su- break the 11, run sub-11, or is running 11 lows. And then, you know, that is what discourages our South African female mm. athletes because they go there, they know where, they're not winning races, they're not coming back with a lot of money. It's their first European trip, they've actually lost money. Yeah, you know, a because lot. Because <laughs> paid a lot to travel, and you thought, I'm going to go and make money because I'm national champion, and you come back and you're broke because you mm. spent so much money on European season, and then you're like, whoa, and you give up. Mm. You know what I mean? So I think that is that is the major thing. There's not enough yeah. pressure, and pressure is good. Ish. Pressure is really good, but um, you know we need pressures from the right angles. We need to to up the racing level and standard in South Africa, in my opinion. And we have Hulk. He came to visit. Oh, is the dog in here? Yeah. Hey, 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 buddy. Hey, buddy. Come in peace. Hey, Hulk. Yeah, but that's that's very true. I think. Yeah. Ish. But like. You know what I mean? Like, do is there enough initiatives or is there enough uh, motivation for these athletes to, 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 to even pursue it? You know, is it worth it? Is it worthwhile? Besides, uh, the experiences of of traveling and getting to experience um, Europe and running locally, is it worth it, guys? Or is it just a plain love thing? Yo, Timo, you're asking <laughs> the hard questions tonight. You be taking nails and <laughs> knocking them in the coffin here. Um, wow, you know, for me, it's very difficult to, to always address a group of young girls and be like, guys, you know, um, you're going to be the best in the world and, and this is worth it. You're going to make a living out of it. Um, you know, cause that would be me lying. Um, I, in, in South Africa, it's, to be honest with you, it's really hard to make a living being an athlete. Being I, don't think you can. I don't think it's even possible. No, it's not possible. Um, you know, so it's hard to motivate, th- motivate these girls to, to continue working hard, to continue rocking up every day for training. Training is hard. Yeah. Training ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, to rock up and run 16 100s or run um, 8 200s back to back or run freaking 16 80 meters back to back, whatever you're doing, it's hard. Yeah. You know? um, and also so much sacrifice. You can't go out, you can't drink, you have to eat well. You know, you can't do what the, the young people are doing right now. You have to sacrifice so much. It's train, sleep, um, eat, repeat type of thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you don't get paid at the end of the month. Mm. So when you look back, you're like, why am I doing this? gotta be the love why am i waking up every day breaking my body you know being hurt so knees so hamstrings so glutes it's gotta be the but love. the next day i wake up and i go back <laughs> but i'm not even being paid <laughs> <laughs> are we crazy it's gotta be the love but i mean you know like, we're addressing this and i mean end of the day um it's not to demotivate young athletes we're no, just no, saying sure. listen we need the sponsors to come out and, and back our girls yeah. we need um uh, companies we need brands we need you know there's a lot of instead of putting um these women that pretend to be running in magazines put karina what in there athletes, yeah. guys. instead of putting uh, somebody in another brand and that person you can see i man, there's no drive phase 100%. there's no technique the physique use the athletes you know i mean, mean athletes we don't mind makeup and stuff right no yeah no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and plus they don't even have to draw abs on us we'll come with the abs you get what I'm saying. we'll come with the abs so that, that's no just photoshops that's just some of the things that i think you know we need to we need to do that um just to make sure that uh, everything is 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 a okay so that the women <laughs> be motivated uh, to run and to push on you know i mean if you look at our our, our development we have so many good athletes, 15, 16, 17. Mm. If brands can just come and give them a monthly stipend, help them get through school, help them get through um, the month without having to go out and work a job yeah. and train. If brands can just do that, I promise you, we will have more female athletes and yeah. more Olympians and Olympic medalists if we can just get the support and the sponsors on hand. I promise you. Mm. That's a promise from it's Lisa Pondi. I, I mean, I'll even become a coach then and coach all these girls. I'll do it. But we just need the support. Mm. 
Karina is also going to become a coach, guys. Karina <laughs> <laughs> coaching. But yeah, I don't think Karina's got the patience for... Exactly. No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. I'll be out Have you seen Karina, what she does in the gym? Yeah, Single yeah, arm, yeah, yeah. 50 kg, <laughs> deadlift there, bicep 1, curl. 1,000 squat. Deadlift, listen to me. Bicep curl, single arm. 1,000 kilogram squat. Guys, <laughs> if there's guys out there that think you can <laughs> squat, hip thrust, Yo. bicep curl, more than Karina, let us know. We'll set up a challenge. Yes, let's put up a challenge. Uh, but we, we want money on the, because <laughs> me, I back. I back my home girl over here. So, <laughs> bring it. You know, but you know, one thing used to irritate me about uh, Karina, I'll just put it out there, sorry. <laughs> Just put it out there, please. Yes, irritate me. She yeah. used to, she'd say stuff like she can, she's faster than me on a hundred. Like what, come on, do you know who I am? <laughs> but still, you, you d- never came to that. I don't know. No, you kept dodging me, you kept dodging me. What is your hundred meter time though? Next thing, I, whatever Karina runs, I run uh, f- uh, 20 splits faster. Yeah, that's <laughs> my time. No, on the real, what's your time on the hundred? No, I haven't run one since I was four. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, okay, what is your 100 split on the 800? Um, yeah, cl- a clock easy 11. <laughs> <day that I've laughs> but then yeah. again, like I said, I've been running uh, since, uh, since I was four. I mean, I, I back it to clock easy 11, but I, I don't know if I back it to beat Karina. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got uh, another uh, bet on the line, so we've got 150 between. Bets <laughs> <laughs> are just fine. Alyssa Carly yeah. and uh, Karina Huren, <laughs> as well as uh, Temba Madima and uh, Karina. Mm, you're going to be doing a lot of racing. Uh, you're gonna I have, have to, to get back in shape. So you're gonna have to uh, uh, dump into those savings, eh? Because I will take your money. <laughs> but you can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you let's talk about this one, right? Um, the age factor. Mm. That's very important. You mm. spoke about it. 32 years old. Uh, back on the track. Sorry to say your age. Uh, yeah. Can I say your age? Yeah, sure. 30 years old. I'm happy 30. you got it right. Yeah. I was, I was like wondering, no, is he going to say 31? What did he say? I do my research. Yeah. So, 32, 30 years old. If I look at female runners, you guys have not reached your peak years. Uh, 30 years old, if I look at female runners, you guys have not reached your peak years. We can go to the likes of War, Flojo, Kamalita, Jada. Uh, Frasier Price is showing it now. Elaine Thompson looks like she's still as, okay, she's still young, but she looks like she, she can go for a, a very long time as well. And... Remember Derby Ferguson? Oh my goodness. Oh, from the oh Bahamas. Oh my goodness. She was 37. Yeah. yeah she was making Veronica. finals, 100 and 200. Easy. Campbell, Veronica Campbell. Brown. Veronica, Veronica Campbell. Campbell. Um, so it's possible. Um, does that give you some form of motivation or do you feel like there comes a time where you must be like, ah, I don't know. Is there an age or is age just a number, as they say? Yeah, for, for me personally, it, it was never about that. I think even if you are 25 and you don't feel well anymore, yeah, yeah. Um, then you're done. It's yeah. for, for me, it's not even, it's not about the age, it's not about the weight, it's about feeling good. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have the feeling, then you still have it. Um, I've never looked at age or, yeah, let's say weight as well. It's, it's all about if you feel good, you can still do it. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you're 25 and you rock up at training and you don't feel well and yeah, this is so and this is so don't feel motivated and you you can put down okay i'm 32 i go to the track i'm motivated i'm feeling good um so then the age is not really um important all right i like that you agree i agree i mean i think i think the major thing here is if you have a history and a background leading up you know because mm. there's a lot of people that ask at the age of 30 can i start track Mm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No. that's Wait a different a minute, topic buddy. now. Yeah, yeah. That's a different topic. You can't, you can't start track at the age of 32. No, but no. I think if you've had a history, if you've been through it, if you understand the pressure, if you understand the hard work, if you understand the sacrifice, then age is nothing but a number. So I hear. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I rock a bit training every day, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> I'm too old for this, but I'm here. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's all about that mental. It's your mental yeah, age. It's, that it's how, yeah. how you handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Because even like you mentioned, Shelly Ann. Um, she was also out with the baby in 2018 or 2017. She was out for a year and she also came back. So, yeah, it, I think it's all the, it all depends on, on how you react on that and how you handle it. Obviously, you're not going to do the same as what you did when you were 20. Yeah. So you have to be clever as well. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, good advice. So that, that's what it's all about as well. Don't try to do everything you did like you've done when you were 10 years old. Yeah. Younger. Train every second day. <laughs> do you hear that, coach? Comes from Karina Horn. She says, train every second day. Every other day, what can I do? Sleep, rest, recover. Train. 
Train lighter. Train lighter. Body weight, body weight. <laughs> circuit, circuit. <laughs> train. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, valuable advice. And uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up soon. Um, a message mm. to South African athletes, women, men, anybody who is out there trying to pursue a career in athletics. I mean, there's a lot of beauties about it. I mean, I have no regret, um, you know, being part of this athletics journey. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's been so rewarding, especially when it comes to personal development as a human, as an individual, you there's not no way where you, you grow as much as you do in, I think athletics, because yeah. it's like, it's, it's so personal. You're in your own lane. You have to, uh, w find your way around life and, you know, maneuver and make it count under whatever pressure it is. Uh, what message do you guys have, uh, before we wrap it up? Yeah, I just think um, whatever you feel in your heart, you have to follow it. Um, as long as the passion is there, um, I think then at the end of the, the, the result and the day, uh, it will be all worth it. Just um, believe in yourself and only you can feel your heart. So don't let other people tell you what to do or how to do it. Um, you do it, what's in your heart. Mm. Conley? 100%. I mean, I learned something new today. Your why, your who, you do. Hey. Bro, like, that, that is going to stick with me. <laughs> That's classic. So thank you for that, Karina. Um, and I think also just uh, don't compare yourself to yeah. anyone else. You, you, you're in your own journey. You're running in your own lane. Like you said, stay in your lane. Stay in, stay in your journey. Know your plan. Um, I mean, I think we compare ourselves too much, mm. but it's been done, guys. We never thought it could be done in South Africa, but it's been done. We have her sitting right here next to us. She ran sub-11. If she did it, you know, yeah. take motivation yeah. from that, take inspiration from that, train hard, work hard, and you can do it. Don't compare yourself, but just do the hard work and anything is possible. And yeah, Karina and I are just hoping that uh, we can light up female um, track and field again and we can bring the energy to the girls and we can keep working hard and inspiring the girls just to, to do best. So I think next year is going to be flames. Mm, mm, mm. I'm super excited for that uh, next year. Uh, keep following, guys. But yeah, with that, uh, that brings us uh, to the end of uh, No Sweat episode number 12. Grab the bull by the horn. The bull was Life. grabbed by the horn. Exactly. Definitely. And I think, you know, it's, it's so funny because you know, Tim was, he sent that to me last night. He was like, there's so many puns because Karina is a bull. Yeah. <laughs> when Karina gets on that track, she's just like, <laughs> like Karina is there. She means business. So, mm -hmm. you know, she is the bull and she does grab the bull by the wall and takes every opportunity. So thank you for hosting us in your in your home. And also thank you for being on, on the show and just sharing your experiences, uh, sharing your journey, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. Um, and we hope that 2024, there's no planes that's going to drop. <laughs> Only medals that's going to rise and planes yeah. that's going to rise. No dropping off planes. And we wish you all the best. And we're definitely going to be back in your career. And yeah, Backtrack's got you. Welcome back. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Awesomeness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wrap. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, September. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Always. Good. It's a wrap. Buy out these four rap weeks. Except for the dogs. Black sports. <laughs>